just, you know, a day in the life, dress your face, you know how it rolls. Uh, we just got Laura Govin ready for the red carpet for the Fast and Furious 7 premiere tonight, which is like right down the street. So we thought, okay, let's just glam her real quick right before we go live. It was kind of fun. And uh, hopefully someone took pictures. You took pictures, right? Okay, cool. Then maybe I can upload some later. But anyway, welcome to the show. Sorry for the three-minute delay. That's usually not like us. Uh, just wanted to make sure lighting is good, audio is good. If you guys can hear me, if you guys can see me well, then great. If you guys have any requests on uh, changing the light or whatever, then let us know if it's too bright or too dark so we can go ahead and make sure you guys are having a perfect image in front of you. Also... Um, this is a pretty wild class because this is a bridal makeup class. This is the first time we're doing a complete start to finish bridal look where it's not just eyes or just face or whatever it is. It's a complete bridal look and this is a bridal look that's for any ethnicity, any culture. Um, it can be worn with the traditional white wedding gown or even with um, other traditional gowns like red or whatever. It will all look good because it's all neutral shades. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, before we get started, I also wanted to uh, explain to you newbies out there who just signed up how this whole lovely Dress Your Face Live thing works. So basically, every time I come in front of you on this lovely live camera, I request that you guys visit the latest post on my Instagram page, which looks like this. And if you guys have any questions or feedback, especially for the Q&A that we're going to do later on, and I might start with some questions now, um, go ahead and ask all your questions in the comments section of that post so that periodically I can go in and look to make sure that you guys are doing okay and understanding okay, and as you guys have questions, I can try to answer them. But for sure, for sure, at the end of every class, I sit down right here in front of you so I can answer a lot of those questions for you, especially the ones that are very popular questions. I also, during the entire class, I like to explain every little thing I'm doing in total detail, as well as you know the products that I'm using, the brushes that I'm using, basically every little aspect of the class and of this whole thing, this whole facade, you know, this awesome thing that we're doing. Um, I want you guys to understand the ins and outs of every little thing that I do in front of the camera. So whether it is the way I'm pressing on the skin, the amount of pressure I'm using, the, the way I'm stroking, all that stuff is going to be explained to you. So if you guys are beginners, do not worry. This entire course line of DressYourFaceLive.com is meant for beginners all the way to advanced artists or even those of you who just want to practice on yourselves. I hope that wasn't too loud for you. Um, anyway, so everybody out there can definitely learn from this, and I'm so glad you're here because you guys are about to be uh, having a lot of fun with us. So today's special guest is my lovely friend Griselda. Her Instagram page name is Makeup by Griselda. I've been tagging her in the post so you guys can show her some love. She's also a very, very famous makeup artist here in Los Angeles area. She does brides all the time. She also teaches, so if you guys are in town for her seminars, definitely check those out. Um, she's constantly, you know, doing something. So check out her page and kind of keep in keep in touch with what's going on in her life so you can be more a part of that. Um, and I'll introduce her in just a moment. Um, as you guys know, I have several giveaways that happen like all the time. Every major class that I do, I have a lovely sponsor or maybe two or three sponsors that like to give away gifts to you guys. As my members, as my viewers, I like to take care of you guys. Um, not only with the best content online and the best quality online, but also the best products that you can get. So the last contest that we've had going on, there's two contests going on. Uh, one is the, uh, we did a Sephora takeover. This was about a week and a half ago. I did a takeover on Sephora's Instagram and we decided to give away uh, a few of my favorite contour items from their collection. So one lucky winner is going to receive that. Um, and then we also, I had a, the Britney Bear makeup tutorial um, that was a little bit before the Sephora one. And we, I'm going to actually put together an awesome giveaway box, like filled with really, really cool things. 
um, valued maybe $500 or maybe more, but at least valued at $500 and one other lucky winner is going to win that. So those winners will be announced after class. Um, I will make that announcement either later tonight, depending on how late the class goes, or by tomorrow morning. So definitely check that post out if you're wondering if you won. And also, I wanted to uh, explain the sponsors for this awesome episode, and I will explain those sponsors right after the class. So you'll see that there's actually going to be three big prizes that we're giving out for whoever is viewing this class. You guys will have a chance to go ahead and enter. Now, the way you enter the giveaways is you have to take screenshots throughout the class of whatever part you like the best of class. So let's say if you're really interested in an eyeliner or whatever it is, Take a screenshot on your phone or on your laptop or whatever you want to do. Take a screenshot to prove that you are a member that you did see this class and you're going to use that later to enter the giveaway. So make sure you're taking screenshots throughout and also of course for your own learning so that you know the steps that were used, what goes first, what goes second, all that stuff. It's really helpful to have screenshots on hand and make sure you're writing a bunch of notes. And then when this episode is uploaded onto your members pages, you'll have a chance to watch it over and over so you can actually practice in front of a mirror or with a model. So definitely do that. That's kind of how things work here. And without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce my lovely co-star of the day. Um, she just got her hair done by me and now she's looking like a bride already. So please welcome Makeup by Griselda. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Welcome to the chair, the throne, the hot seat, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Thank you. Yay, thank, thank you for you having me. Being here. It's so exciting. I'm super excited to be here as well. Thank and having you. me, it's, it's an honor. Ah, and you an honor for us. It's a total honor for us. <laughs> thank you. Now, you guys know Griselda is also a professional. So throughout this whole class, if she has a few extra tips for you guys, and I'm telling you this not to, if you have any extra tips for them while we're working together, anything that you found, products that you like, whatever it is, feel free to shout it out. I'm just gonna be talking the whole time explaining stuff, but feel free to just like, you know, every artist has their like secrets. So it would be kind of fun to compare and see like what I do different versus what she does different. As you guys saw on her page, you know, you see her makeup and everything's always perfect, whatever. <laughs> but when the eyes and her makeup, it was very different. Obviously, when someone else does someone's makeup, especially as a makeup artist, you're doing someone else's makeup, you have a different, you know, idea of what you think will look good or whatever. So it's really fun to have different opinions and different uh, approaches to makeup art. And there's not like one right way of doing things. There's so many ways to get to the same end result or similar end results. So um, that's kind of why I thought it would be really fun to have an actual professional makeup artist in the seat so we can kind of bounce off ideas of each other and like really have fun today. So this is a real treat for um, all of us. Thank you. Yay! Great. So I've done her hair. Uh, I just gave her a kind of fun updo. I used my Bombay Hair um, Tamana Complete Styling Set, the one that I've created with Bombay Hair. <laughs> and um, it's kind of awesome because you get a straightener and a bunch of curly wands and basically anything you need to style someone's hair. So I used my uh, straightener from the set and I just kind of gave her hair a very soft curl. I sprayed the crap out of it, I teased the crap out of it, and I pinned it all up into a side bun and I made sure that the bangs were really teased nicely so we can get that height going on here. Of course with the makeup on it will all come together and lastly we will go ahead and put this really cool piece um, on her as a final touch. This piece is from uh, Da Vinci Collections. Uh, they, I'm also following them if you see who I'm following, which is like a lot of people, but if you go through it, um, and I will explain who they are in a minute, but they're going to do a giveaway for us today too. So stay tuned for all that. Now, I think we should just get started. I agree. Okay. So again, I want to remind you, if you guys have questions along the way, my team is monitoring the questions, maybe they can shout out some questions eh? while we're working. Um, this post right here, I want you to go ahead and ask away, ask any questions. I also want to know where you're from. If you're around, the, I mean, I have viewers from around the world. My members are amazing. You're from everywhere. So I'd like to know right now, you know, where are you from? Where are you viewing this from? So we know time zones and stuff like, you know, the majority of the people, obviously I'm assuming they're from the U.S. if they're viewing it at this time. But uh, if you're, you know, halfway around the world, up super, super early in the morning watching this, I truly, truly appreciate it. And we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and comment away. 
and I'll just make sure to check it periodically to make sure I can answer your questions. Oh my god, all right, 100 warmers already, that's great. Okay, cool, so let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I wanna talk a little bit of a background about bridal makeup, and you can definitely, you know, chime in. Basically, and here's the difference between like American bridal and like brown girl bridal. So, well, I guess we're all American because we're all living here, but whatever. So, brown girl bridal, we do things a little bit more glam. So, I'm half Indian, half Afghan, and where exactly are you from? I'm, I was born in Guatemala. Awesome. So, we kind of like a little bit more of a glam look in general, maybe like a soft glam for a bridal look, and then of course for reception you can go nuts, whatever. Um, now, with Indians and Afghan girls, Persians, you know, that whole sector, we like to kind of go a little heavier than normal. So what I'm going to be doing today may be changed when you're doing it in the real world based on what your brides are asking for and based on what you're known for. Now, I'm known for the glam look, so most of my brides ask me for that glam look. Now, if I was known for a more natural look, that's probably what I would be doing more of because that's what they would be seeing me do and that's why they would be hiring me. So the girls that hire me expect the glam, which is what I'm going to teach today. But just note that you can definitely soften the load. You can use less product. You could pack a little bit less than I do. You can use softer shades. You can skip the black. You know, there's certain things that you can do to make this bridal look a lot more softer and more appropriate for the bride that wants that more natural way of doing things. So I'll explain everything in detail as I'm doing it, but I just wanted to put out that disclaimer just so you know. The techniques that I'm going to show you right now are totally meant for any look. You are in control of how much you put on and the colors that you choose, okay? So first things first, obviously, we want to make sure that this bridal look lasts all day and all night through the photo shoots and everything because usually it's very hard to have uh, that availability to go with your bride to the wedding and stay next to her for touch-ups and all that stuff. And it's just not realistic to be next to her all the time. She's gonna be busy with family and all that stuff. You may not even be able to steal her away for a touch up. So what you wanna do is make sure that the makeup that you're using and the way you're doing things is for a long lasting um, you know, uh, application for her so that she doesn't have to have those touch ups. And that's kind of one of the reasons why in most of my classes that you've seen, or if you're new, what you're gonna see right now is going to be more of a powder packing method, which is gonna keep that makeup on the skin longer um, it is a heavier look. It's definitely not natural. So again, it's up to you how much you want to use, but that's kind of one of the things that I do to make sure that the face stays on and doesn't melt off. And the other thing is, of course, priming. When it comes to foundation primers, um, I've gone through so many. I've never, I don't think I've really fallen in love with the Total Primer, except for one for dry skin, which is the Hourglass Primer. Um, the number 28 serum. That's amazing for dry skin, really thirsty skin like mine. Now for oily skin, I've just kind of stuck with like MAC, Prep and Prime, the original, no SPF, no shimmer in it, just the basic. Um, it works pretty well for my oily skin clients. But Christelle, like, do you know of any primer that you've fallen in love with that you really like for your brides, depending on their skin types? I do. I really um, love using the Benefit of the Professional. Um, oh, yeah. It does mattify the skin That's for oily skin. I like to move in the, the primer into the skin with my fingers um, just to make sure that it gets into the skin really, really well. So that's one of my favorites that I use on my brides all the time. Awesome. That is a good one, actually. Um, I just tried it last year after like so long of hearing about it. Um, and it definitely works for smoothing out the pores and making sure everything just looks super flawless. And um, I, I think I bought it with me, too. Yeah. And I've used this, I don't, I mean, do you usually use it under a primer or over? Because sometimes I'll do like the MAC, the MAC one first, and then sometimes I'll go over certain zones with this, um, just on the areas that I really, really feel need a little of that extra bit. But do you, do you use it with another primer usually or by itself? I use it with the Skin Refined Zone by MAC as well, because that also helps to modify the skin. Um, so I do That's what I need. I, I, <laughs> I use that first. I do the Skin Refined Zone and then I go in with my fingers and then just kind of so blend good. it into my skin. The areas that are a lot more um, textured that need to be look, that look more flawless. Perfecto. Okay, so we'll do that. I don't have the first thing that she said, but um, the MAC thing. But I'll use my MAC primer and then I'm going to use the Benefit 
get professional um, on other areas as well so you can get that perfect flawless finish first. Then we're going to go into foundation. As far as foundations, I'm a mad girl when it comes down to it. I just have so many different, um, you know, I guess it's the, the benefits of using the MAC ones that I like is the fact that it's fuller coverage, it looks pretty true on camera, very flawless, and that's usually what I use. But of course there are some brides that I've had that are allergic to MAC, and so in their cases I have them bring their own foundation, and then I can use my powders and stuff over it, and you could use MAC over that as long as the first few things that touches their skin isn't the brand they're allergic to, it's usually okay to layer or piggyback it, but always have a trial with your bride first if you're gonna do that, just so you can make sure everything's looking good. The other thing about using your bride's foundation is it may not be the exact coverage you like or whatever it is, so that's usually why I like to mix it with my stuff over it. I also have Cinema Secrets, which is awesome. They have those palettes, it's so full coverage, it just looks like, I mean, it looks like a mannequin face when you're done, it's so awesome. Like, I love that look, I'm sorry, I love that look. But um, anyway, I use that sometimes too, especially if my brides are not liking MAC. So anyway, but we're gonna do um, what we did in the promo, which is the MAC one. Let's go ahead and get started on the primer. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit so we can just get face shot here. From now on, it's all gonna be face. You're gonna see everything in detail. So once we're all zoomed in, I'm gonna go ahead and get started for you. Again, if you guys are just joining us, go ahead and ask your Q&A questions in the comments of my latest Instagram post. And I'd also like to ask where you guys are from so we can, um, should I scoot you up? So we can ask, uh, you know, where you guys are living. I want to know. Closer, 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 closer. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> we're, we're getting um, pretty personal. Okay, yeah, I know. It's okay. I don't mind that. Oh, great. All right. I kind of need to see the frame a little bit. Yeah, cool. Okay. So I'm going to start using hello, the Prep and Prime from MAC. This is just the original. Nothing special about it. Good stuff. Sorry if my fingers are like freezing cold. And I'm just going to make sure it just goes everywhere. And then we're going to use the benefit. Um, over some zones as well. I love using my fingers when I'm doing face uh, priming because I want to make sure that it's actually soaking in the face really well. Um, I'm not skipping any zones. Everything's looking really silky and all that goodness. Um, using a brush is totally okay too, but the only thing is usually if it's a silicone based primer, it's going to make your bristles kind of uh, not stiff, but kind of gunky. And so I usually, and then also the bristles of the brush absorb a little bit too much, so you end up wasting a lot. So I tend to just love to do it this way. Okay, let's get into the poor professional from Benefit, this lovely lady right here. Yes, that's good. I like to see the frame to make sure I'm not like talking to nothing. We got this going on right here. We're gonna use this on mainly the T-zone. See how it kind of just like smooths out the skin. It gives like a little bit of that airbrushed effect. It's really cool. Right in here too. Alrighty. And then make sure you go a little bit above the lips. Smooth out the whole T-zone area, basically. Now, if someone's super oily all over their skin or has major pores all over the face, then absolutely, why not use this everywhere? It's totally fine. It's just it's a small tube, so I try to use it as sparingly as possible. So right now, I'm just kind of using up whatever's left on my hand, making sure that it's kind of blurring the areas of the skin that I need blurred. And now we're all prepped and ready to go. So first thing that we're actually going to see on her is the foundation. I usually do foundation before I do concealer. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a bronzy tone to the skin as well. I usually like to go a little darker, but when you're working on a bride, you ask your bride, do you want me to match you to your exact tone? Or is your preference to go a little lighter? Or is your preference to go a little bit more bronzy? Based on her, requests you figure out what you want to do with her 
Um, I usually just like to ask a lot of questions to my bride just to make sure that she's happy with the decisions we're making and there's no stress on her big day and everything is just all good. So I am going to mix NC25 and NC35 as her base. And then we're going to add a lot of bronzing with the, the um, concealer that I'm going to use for her contour. Okay, so I am using this lovely Morphe brush M427, this brush here. And we're going to use this to literally just stipple in the foundation into the skin. And we're just pushing it in very softly into the skin without wiping because the last thing we want is for all of our coverage to just wipe off. We want to make sure it's more of a stamped on motion so that not only are you applying it full coverage, but you're letting it melt to the first uh, top layer of the skin so it looks flawless without rubbing, without buffing, none of these circle circle motions. So just push it in. This also helps to make it long lasting because you're literally pushing it into the pores instead of wiping it all over. If a little bit gets on the lips, that's actually a good thing, especially around the lip line. What it's gonna do is it's gonna clean up the lip line so when you are ready for her lipstick, it's gonna look much more sharp and defined. Just stamp away. What foundations do you like? Um, I normally use NAC. I like the Makeup Forever HD foundation as well. Mm -hmm. And I've been obsessed with um, Hoyt's cream foundation. I've never tried that. It's amazing. It's um, full coverage. Um, you would probably fall in love with it. Yeah. Um, and it just <laughs> leaves the skin just flawless. Awesome. Where do you get that? Um, it's online. You can get it online. It's uh, if you follow them, it's Poise Cosmetics um, on Instagram. Nice. It's 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 pretty a pretty amazing foundation. I have to try that. You do, and it comes in a in a palette where oh. it's like different colors. Um, Is it kind of like the Cinema Secrets way of doing it? Yes. Nice. So it's a lot a lot bigger. Um, but I, I just love it because you can, like, you do that stippling motion, mm -hmm. and it, you don't have to work as hard um, when applying the foundation. Nice. It's, it's very, I really enjoy using that foundation on my bride as well. Is it a, like, how does it finish? Is it a matte finish, or? It isn't a matte finish. It's a satin finish, um, but, like, you, I also use the Studio Fix fluid, I mean, Studio Fix powder oh. um, to kind of, like, press it in to Perfect. make it matte. Good, good, good. Okay, now that we have ghost face, we're ready to add dimension. But before we really add dimension, I want to brighten up the under eyes with a special concealer. I love, love, love MAC uh, Pro Longwear Concealers. And just to brighten it up without looking so uh, white, I usually like to add a little bit of an apricot tone to the concealer so that it doesn't have that uh, gray effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put NC35 concealer. The other thing is the um, concealers at MAC, the Pro Longwear concealers actually go on a little bit lighter than the foundations do as far as the color pigmentation. So um, it's okay to go a little darker. It's not going to show up dark. So I'm mixing that with a hint of NC42. Now the NC42 is the color that has that apricot tone, which is going to cancel out any darkness under her eyes. Not that she really has dark circles, but I know that it's a question that a lot of you guys have out there, how to hide dark circles without turning gray. So this is how I do it. I add NC42. If it's major dark circles, then you need an actual orange concealer first to knock it out, and then you can use your beige concealer over it. But this way usually kind of um, helps anyway. And I'm going to use um, my MAC brush number 287 for this particular uh, portion. I love 287 for concealer and also for eyeshadow base. Any kind of a cream step that you have that requires a smaller brush, this is the brush that I'm talking about right here. I love the brush as well. I love it, right? Again, it's 287. 
So I have the um, concealer concoction right up here, and we're just going to give it a little mix and go ahead and look up to the ceiling. We're going to stamp it right under the eyes. Stamp, stamp, stamp. Make sure you're getting the inner C's of the eyes as well, just to brighten up those areas too. So any areas that just are a little bit shadowy, make sure you're getting this concealer on those areas. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm stamping over and over again until the concealer is dried. Now what you're gonna notice is when the concealer is very, very wet and freshly applied, it's very shiny. As it dries, it loses its shine. So I know that as I'm patting and patting, it's drying because it's starting to mattify a little bit. So not until it's fully mattified am I gonna stop patting because this is what's gonna prevent major creasing. Instead of slathering too much and then having to push it in, we're doing little at a time and we're patting, patting, patting until it's set. Now, until we set it with powder, it's going to crease again. But the thing about this particular concealer is it's a little drier than the other ones, so it doesn't crease as much of, as a cream concealer does. So that's why I still prefer this concealer, but unless you powder it up, it's still going to crease. So we are gonna powder it up afterward. And we may have to you know, set it down again a little bit right before we powder, but I just wanted to explain that to you guys that potting is really the way to get it to be flawless. And you also find that with this concealer, you have to move quick because it dries quickly as mm -hmm. well. So I wouldn't recommend to apply the concealer on both eyes. I would just start with one eye first and then move on to the next one just like Samana is doing. Perfect. I love that you said that because I feel like a lot of uh, people, just to save time, they try to dot it everywhere and then blend, yeah. but it's only going to waste your time because it's going to take you longer to blend something that's already dried up. So we're just patting away the same exact way we did the other side until it sets, until I don't see that major shine anymore. Okay. Now whatever's left on the brush, you can go around the edges of the nose. Any areas that need a little extra guarding, especially around the nose, mainly because what happens is with oil, with um, oily skin or T-zones that have that trouble, it's very easy for the nose to get very slippery around there. And then it starts to beat up or, or look like uh, it's breaking apart. So adding a little bit of the same concealer but patting it on the nose area is going to help to give it a little bit more of that kind of a barrier. And we're just going to keep patting until it dries. Same way. Now these techniques I, I pretty much use on most people, but I'm really particular on my brides especially. So these patting techniques, especially around the nose and stuff, is definitely something I would do with my brides, even if they don't really have super oily skin, just to make sure the T-zone is really in place. I'm going to turn a little bit this way. Yeah, perfect. So we're just going to pat it until it looks perfecto. Make sure you're going below the nostril as well. And above the lip. Laugh line area. Really pack that in. Make it perfect. Okay, so now that that's done, we can now finally have fun with contour and a little bit more of that highlight. So what we're going to use is the LA Girl Pro Conceal, which I love, love. I don't know if you guys saw my post. I think it was yesterday or the day before. The Pro Conceal now comes in so many more colors. So for those of you who couldn't find your shade last time, they expanded their shade range. It's amazing. The pigment is so good, but it dries fast, so you've got to work quick with it and make sure you're blending really well. So, when it comes to those two items, I'm gonna use Creamy Beige and I'm gonna use Beautiful Bronze on her face for the highlighting contour. I'm not gonna to go too, too crazy because again, this is bridal. We don't want it to be like, unless they want full on red carpet, which I love, but we're gonna go slightly, like maybe half a notch lower than red carpet just so it's like, you know, realistic bride. We're going to start with the highlight. This is Creamy Beige from LA Girl Pro Conceal. We're just going to brighten up the center of the forehead a little bit. We're going to bring it down 
to the tip of the nose. This is going to sharpen up the bridge of the nose, basically. We're also going to just brighten up a little bit on the apples of the cheeks and a little bit below the eyes. We already did like a perfect concealer for her, so I'm not trying to go all up under her eyes. We just want to brighten up that center zone. Lastly, a little bit here and a little bit on the chin. I try not to do too much, but just enough. Now that that's on, I can go in with my beautiful bronze uh, contour color. And we can draw in a little bit of a contour line there. Basically going from the top of the ear towards the corner of the mouth and letting it disappear before it hits the corner of the mouth. That's basically the way I kind of do that cheat sheet method. Um, top of the ear towards the corner of the mouth. We're going to do a little bit on the temple zones here. She does not have a huge forehead, so we don't need to overly contour the whole forehead. It's only going to make it look really, really, really small. So in order to keep it looking in proportion to the rest of the face, we're only going to contour really the sides of the forehead just to give that rounded effect. And we can also bring in a little bit of bronze up here, but we're not going to overly contour. We don't need to. If someone's forehead is much larger, that's when you do more contour and less highlight. Now we're just going to do very, very, very light shading on the sides of the nose for the nose contour. Just a little bit. Again, this is a bright. We don't want to go nuts. And then a little bit below the lower lip for that pouty effect. And we can also kind of just chisel out the jawline. Go ahead, Griselda, and turn a little bit side to side so the girls can see kind of the angles in which we've applied the lights and darks. Awesome. This is kind of, girls, this is where you take your screenshots. And gentlemen who are watching, take your screenshots, make sure you have your mapping going. So as you notice, if you guys have been my students for a while, every time I contour, it could be a little bit different. It doesn't have to be exactly the same on everyone. It can't really be exactly the same on everyone because there's no two faces that are exactly the same to begin with. So you kind of go off of features, um, and of course, you go off of the occasion. So if the occasion calls for something wild, you go wild. If the occasion calls for something softer, you go softer. Now for the blending. So I'm going to use my lovely MAC number 130 brush. Looks like this. I'm just going to give it a quick spray. Hey, Tam. Yeah? Question. There's a question? How do you cover up a tattoo? How do you cover up a tattoo? I love how you just asked me while I was trying to explain something else. <laughs> anyway, how to cover up a tattoo. Um, basically, what I have, the Cinema Secrets uh, foundation palette, because it's full coverage, I just use that. You can actually use it with the same brush right here, the 130. You go in and you stipple it on the same way we stippled on her foundation on the face to make it full coverage. You would do that on the tattoo area. Stipple on Cinema Secrets or any full coverage foundation, like a, especially a stage makeup. That's kind of what Cinema Secrets was for, stage makeup. Graftobian is the same way, Ben Nye, um, RCMA, all them. So stipple that on and then set it with power. And, and make sure that the color that you're using, let's say if you're trying to cover a darker tattoo, like the traditional like greenish blue color, make sure that the color you're stippling on first is a little bit more orange to knock out the blue tones. And then you can stipple over that with her actual skin color and then set it with a Studio Fix powder or any powder, um, and it should last and hide everything. Nothing much else. Yay. That's that. So, exactly how I would is that how you do it? it? Awesome. So what I'm doing now is I am pushing in all the highlight zones using my clean 130 brush from MAC. Literally, all I'm doing is pushing it in. I'm not wiping. I'm not dragging. I am just letting it melt into the previous layer that we've put on. Push, 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 push. Going here too. Do not forget any zones. Going down the bridge of the nose, pushing that in. Pushing this and the chin. Now we can give it a little bit of a wipey. Wipe off with the tissue just so that we're not transferring light color over her dark areas. And now we can do the same thing 
with her contour zones. So all I'm doing is pushing it in. If you feel like it's very hard for you to uh, get a good blend with this, if it's already dried up, let's say, if the product already dried up and you're like, oh my god, it's like not moving, you can spray like the MAC Mineralize Spray to wet the skin again and let it move around, but I normally would hold off on that only because I don't want it to dilute and mess up the whole makeup while you're in the process of doing it. I love full coverage and the last thing I want to do is dilute. So I only do that on like emergency basis normally. What I do is if it's not moving, use your finger. And you could do a little bit of a wiping movement and the warmth of your finger should help move the product over. On the jawline, I'm literally wiping though because I just don't like a strong brown line on the jaw. So that's why I'm doing a little bit more of a wiping movement. I'm gonna have you turn this way. We're gonna push this in. And any areas that just aren't moving, you can absolutely use your fingers. And then the jaw, I like to kind of just wipe it off. <laughs> just to show a little bit of a shadowy kind of a, of a look, but no strength in the line itself. We're going to just blur the underlip area. We're going to blur the temple zones. Whatever's left on the brush, we can bring it up to the hairline as well. Temple zone here. Use your fingers to smooth if you need to, no big deal. And with a smaller brush, maybe going back to that concealer brush that we were working with earlier, we can now smooth out the sides of the nose. Okay, so now we have this kind of a halfway contoured face. Halfway meaning it's only the um, cream contour right now and it is not set with any contour powders yet. So it still needs to be set. We're now going to do that stage. So this next step is to set each zone with its corresponding powder color. So instead of choosing one color for the whole face, which you can if it's translucent, but I'm a fan of full coverage products. I don't even carry a translucent powder in my kit. So we're going to use three colors of Studio Fix from MAC, their powders, to set each corresponding zone. And then we can whip out the Anastasia Contour book to really go crazy if we want to, but we have to kind of keep me in check a little bit because I tend to like go nuts and I know this is a bridal <laughs> class, so I don't want to like offend anybody with like, why do you have to transform your entire bride? It's just about having fun, guys. It's not that serious. All right, so I'm gonna choose NC25 for Griselda's light zones. NC, yeah, awesome. NC40 for her mediums. And we're gonna go into NC42 for her darks for now, and then we might make it a little bit darker with the Anastasia kit, but we'll see how that goes. So first things first, NC25 for her lights. I'm going to use the Morphe M07 brush, which looks like this. Go ahead and look up to the ceiling. It's a ball brush. Like it's so fluffy and nice, but it's really small. So it fits really well under the eyes. So I'm going to use this to set her under eye first so that I don't have to worry about that part creasing. And again, I like to set heavy, but you and your bride decide what you want to do. And before I'm setting, I'm just making sure that the under eye is smooth because if it's not smooth and you go into set, it's going to set those lines and you're forever going to see those chunky lines. So I'm just making sure I'm patting in NC25 Studio Fix powder to really bring out the um, brightness under her eyes. We did that on both sides now. Can we get the screen back? Thank you. So now it's starting to look a little bit more photoshopped, airbrushed, I don't know how you want to call it but it's starting to really look nice and even, nice and bright, and blurred a little bit, because that's what powder does, is it blurs the skin. Without a lot of powder, the skin looks harsh and shiny. 
So with this powder, it's starting to look like a Barbie bride. And we're brightening up now the other areas that we've highlighted. So a little bit down towards the cheek area in here, the ball of the cheek, the apple of the cheek. Just bringing in some brightness there so that when we do her blush that it really stands out. And now I'm just going to soft, soften the upper lip there, making sure I'm going around the edges of the nose as well. Just the very edges. Just to brighten up the little shadow that I'm seeing here. Okay, it's all about tricks, shadows and light tricks. And now I'm going to go down her T-zone, so we're going to go right in the middle of the forehead here between the eyebrows. And we're going to bring this color and stamp it down the center of the nose. And whatever's left on the brush, a little bit on the chin, that's it. So now that the light parts are done, we're going to go in with the dark color, which is going to be NC42 for now, just to set her contour zones before we go crazy with the contour. So I'm going to go in with my um, Morphe brush M438 with NC42 powder. It is a tapered brush from Morphe. I love that brush. Isn't it awesome? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. I nearly died when they came out with this collection. I, I was waiting for this day. Because I've been spending so much money for Hakuhoto brushes up until they came out with the same kind of ones. So what I'm doing now is I'm just very lightly, like a feather, setting the dark zones. Okay. Let's do the forehead area, the temple, bring in some color. A little bit on the hairline area, temple zone here. You can connect it with the contour here and make sure you get the jaw area right under here. And I do also like to fill in the whole neck with this darker shade. It's not so much darker than her natural. It's just a few shades. It's not like I'm putting like a full on bronzer here. It's just a nice tone. And now that you've already applied some, now that if you build it, it's not going to be stuck to her skin like glue. It's just going to glide on her skin really nicely. If her foundation was still wet, it would grab on really heavily and it would be harder for you to blend. I'm also pinching the brush so I can get the sides of her nose a little bit. Okay, now for the medium tone, which is NC40. I'm going to go in with my 109 brush from MAC. It's this ball brush here. And now I'm just going to fill in the areas that haven't been set yet. So this area here, this one here right under her cheekbone. And I'm, again, stippling it on because I want full coverage everywhere. I do not want to see skin underneath. But that's my preference. And now on the sides of the nose. So here's the thing, the other thing. With this medium color, you can use it to lighten up any areas that are too dark or darken up areas that are too light because right in between. So this is kind of like the eraser step where everything starts to look a little bit more balanced. So in order to soften up her nose contour, we can now add a nice layer of this medium tone. And it literally blurs her contour but doesn't remove it. So we're not wiping off her contour, we're just adding a layer of medium to fuse it all together and make it look a little bit more believable. We can do the same in between the lights and the darks here, and in between the darks and the lights here, we can put a layer of the medium as well, just so that nothing looks too sharp. Okay? And lastly, right on the upper lip area, adding another good layer, just to make sure nothing becomes shiny above the lips. So now that that's done, we can start adding some color to her, make her look really bronze and really contoured with the Anastasia Contour Kit. The reason why I didn't go straight for the Contour Kit personally is because, again, when the foundation is not set yet, it's still kind of wet. So what happens is it's going to grab onto those areas a little more harsh, and I don't want to have to sit here and blend for days. 
So I'm going to go in with the same Morphe brush that we used before for her contour zones and whip out the contour book. Dun, 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 dun. And we're going to use some of the darker shades to kind of give her a little bit more of that bronzy look. I will put it light on your lap if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. So I'm going to choose... It doesn't even come out. I'm going to choose a color called Fawn. This color is like a soft uh, tannish brown. And I'm going to start chiseling out the upper part of her cheekbone with this. And I'm going to warm it up later with a warmer tone. But for now, I just want to use something a little bit more neutral, just so it's not too orange, just on that outer portion. So I'm just flicking some color right on that part, just to give her a little bit of that uh, sculpted look. Now to warm it up, I can go in with Havana, which is just a little bit warmer. Warmer meaning a hint of orange undertone. And I'm going to go over that whole cheek area with Havana. And this is what's going to give her that bronzy look. Now what I'm doing is I'm flicking it downward a little bit, whatever's left on my brush, just to bronze up the lower half of the face so it doesn't look too white in comparison to the neck. So everything is done kind of in layers. And the cool thing about layers is that using a lot of thin layers rather than one really fat layer of stuff is longer lasting because if you weather and stuff has to go through every single layer to get through all those layers to get to your natural skin. So if you just put one fat layer, you can literally wipe it all off and it's gone. But lots of thin layers with time to settle in between and blend it in between and all that stuff is going to last so much longer throughout the day. So we're going to do the same thing here. Adding a little bit of Havana right along the entire cheek area. Just giving that bronze glow and now flicking it down to give a little bit more color to the lower half of the face. And flicking it down only with whatever product is remaining on the brush. The first amount of product I already dispersed on the cheek area. This is just flicking the remainder. So it starts to look a little bit more bronzy, basically. We can do the same for the temple zone, just adding a little bit more bronze to the edges. Okay, now it's starting to look a little bit more 3D, right? And at this point, if it was just me choosing what I wanted on the bride, I would go like 10 times heavier. I would go a lot more bronze or whatever. But I'm going to treat Griselda as my bride, and I'm going to ask Griselda, do you want me to go any bronzer, or do you want to stick with this? And then after the blush and the eyes are done, maybe we can revisit that. Yes. Okay. That's what I figured. <laughs> okay, so, and this is kind of what I asked my brides, you know, if she was, if this was her wedding or this was our trial or something like that, I wouldn't want to just go like zero to 100 right away. I don't want to freak out my bride the first time she's meeting me or whatever it is. You kind of want to ease them into it. And maybe, like I said, maybe once her eyes are done, her eyebrows are done, her lips are on and her blush is on, maybe then I can maybe talk her into going a little bit bronzer once everything is in place and she could see herself. Okay. So we'll, we'll wait. I think we're okay here. Yes. All right, great. So, one thing though, real quick, what I'll do actually, we don't even need this book. Um, I have the mini version here. I'm gonna use a hint of banana and golden peach um, under the eyes, just for a little bit extra brightening. Right in through here. This will also help, um, not that there's really going to be any fallout, but in case there is, it will help to prevent the um, eyeshadow fallout from sticking to her. This is just another layer of powder, basically. So, okay, now that we've highlighted a little bit more, we're ready for, oh, do you want the JLo bronze glow thing? I do. On? Okay, so we'll do that next. So now I'm going to show you how to give her that JLo glow. It's basically just adding a little bit of shimmer in certain areas. So I'm going to show you that now. I like to use Girlactic Face Glow in Bronze for that particular thing. It's what I'm wearing today, too. It's very glowy, very shiny, and this is what it looks like. 
And this is the brush I'm using, which is actually Hakukoto, but it's basically the same shape as the Morphe brush, so you can totally go into Morphe and get it. But if you like this particular one, this is Hakukoto J5521. Good smile. So right where you're catching her smile, the ball all the way up to the outer part of her eye, that's where we're applying a little bit of that beautiful JLo glow. Go ahead and face there a little bit and chin up slightly. Do you see that? Right there. And chin down again. Gorgeous. So now you can see it kind of go up in here. So that's how I would apply it. Go ahead and face me now. Right up in here where her smile starts right all the way up to the outside of her eye. And that is such a pretty glow. And if you feel like it's too much, you can always use your fingers to just kind of rub it in a little bit and lessen the blow of it. But I kind of like a little bit of that beaming look, especially as a fight. I think it's so beautiful. Whatever's left on your brush, you can absolutely just go down the bridge of the nose with that as well. And that's about it. So mainly the, you know, the focal point of the face, which is right in here and right in there. And the nose thing, you know, if, it, if the nose gets super shiny, if your bride's like, my T-zone's super, super oily, then do not put a lot of shimmer down their T-zone or don't put any shimmer there. Focus more over here if they even want shimmer to begin with. So yes, that's kind of how I do that whole J-Lo glow thing. Just in certain areas, not overly done. Now, if someone wants that dewy look all over, that's when I go ahead and I also apply it a little bit above the eyebrows here and you can smooth it into the powder, and that kind of gives a little bit more of that glowy effect to the forehead as well to make it look like all over her foundation is glowing, where in fact, whatever you're seeing is using dry products, not wet products. If you're using a lot of wet products and cream products, it doesn't last as long, and my whole thing is, I can't stay for the wedding, so I need to make sure that she's taken care of while I'm gone. Okay, great. So, next is the blush. Now, I have a lot of favorites, but when it comes to um, brides, I like to keep it a little bit more rosy or dusty rosy or softer. One of my absolute favorites for everybody is this one color here called Plum Foolery. It's like um, a beautiful, soft, plumish color, but it, it's mixed with some bronze in there. Another one of my favorites, I think it got discontinued, is called Buff but I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. You may have to get it on eBay or something. Um, and then there's Copper Tone, which I really, really love for that peachy glow. So I'm going to ask my bride right now, do you like peachy or more rosy or more plummy? What's your deal with blush? More peachy. All right, sounds good. Are we gonna go more peachy with your lips too? Yes. Peachy nude, right? Okay, perfect. So that's another thing that I ask when I'm asking about, you know, what's your color, all that stuff. I like to just make sure that whatever color she likes for her cheeks, it also works for her lips because with lips and cheeks, I like to keep those balanced. But eyes, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules. So we're going to use a little bit of copper tone. Smile. And I'm just going to literally feather it on her apple and bring it out to her contour out there. And all that's doing is giving her a little bit of that healthy glow without going too orange or too bright. A little bit of feathering here, especially catching on her apple and then going up is just looking so youthful and so feminine. Soft and pretty. Oh my god. I saw that getting emotional. I think you're like getting yay for real. <laughs> all right, that's already looking like super bridal. So now that the face is technically done, and we are going to revisit this later, just in case, you know, once the eyes are done, if we want to add a little bit more blush or add a little bit of bronzer, we can totally do that later. But for now, we're going to go ahead and start with the eyes. And then we're going <laughs> we're just posing for a selfie, just so you know. Um, we're going to start with the eye, eyebrows, and then we're going to go into eyes. Um, I like to do eyebrows first just to give me that framing going on, and then I can get into the eyes. But before I even do the eyebrows, I do the eyeshadow base just to get that out of the way. So we're going to do the base next. And we're going to use the same concealer brush that we used now like four times, three times. Do you mind if you're asking me any questions? Oh my god, of course. So guys, if you um, want to ask any questions to Griselda while I'm doing this, you guys can, like, you can go through my uh, questions on my page and feel free to, like, you know, ask them um, if anything is kind of related to what we're doing. And then whenever questions are not related to what we're doing, I'll ask, answer after class. 
So yes, continue to ask your questions in that latest post on my page. So we're just going to go ahead and put a little bit of eyeshadow base on her. Just make sure you're putting it everywhere, like all the way from her brow to the um, lash line. And you're not skipping any areas either. It should all be very even, like that. So yes, if you guys have any questions for Griselda, she can answer as well. Go ahead and ask it in the comment section of my latest post. She's going to be refreshing and checking your questions periodically. As long as I'm not jabbing her eye. Or <laughs> okay. Next thing we're going to do, brows. So what I'm going to use is the Anastasia angled brow brush. It comes with a spoolie at the other end, so we can style her brows accordingly. Any questions yet? Not yet. Okay. Don't be shy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Say Griselda. I got one. What do you, okay, great. How do you handle very textured cheeks? Lots of blush, have shimmer, and make it makes the bump really show any tips. Um, typically, I would stay away from any shimmer that my client, my bride, um, has textured skin because doing the client shimmer is just gonna enhance the texture of your client's um, skin. So I would stay away from shine and just st um, stick to, to using matte, uh, blush, powders, even highlights. So that would be my my way of um, dealing with the textured skin. Yup. And professional. Let's see. So what I'm doing right now for the eyebrows is I'm using the Anastasia Dip Brow in Ebony, and I'm trying not to go super dark with it because I don't like it to be too harsh. So I'm just taking small, small strokes with the um, Anastasia Angled Brow Brush, and I'm starting with the lower, um, edge of the brow just to give it a little definition first and then we're going to do the top edge. So they're asking what eyeshadow base you used. Oh my god, how silly of me to forget to say which one it is. It's MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. That's the eyeshadow base I always use. On deeper skin tones I use um, another color. Um, groundwork? Yeah, Groundwork. This one here. That's for deeper skin tones, and then soft ochre I use for lighter skin tones, and then I don't even have painterly in my kit, I don't like that color, but for like super, super, super light Caucasian girls that the soft ochre is too yellow on, you can use painterly because it's pinker. I agree. So the next question is, what are my favorite brow products? Well, I'm... Obviously, an Anastasia fan. I use the pomade, the Brow Wiz. When I'm trying to go for a more softer look for my for my either myself or my brides, um, I use a Brow Wiz and do like a curl, uh, clear brow gel. Um, if I want to do more of a defined eyebrow, I go in with the pomade, um, the Dip Brow pomade. Same thing. Mm -hmm. um, to add a little bit more definition to the brows. Um, and if you feel like your brows are a little too harsh, you can always do um, like a caramel or a taupey um, brow gel that Anastasia also um, carries to kind of soften up the brow a little bit more. I've been trying to do like the pomade, like in a medium brown, and then do caramel on top of it. And it kind of seems to be working for me to just soften up my look a little bit more. I love caramel. Yes. I think that's such a beautiful color. Let's see, what other questions do you guys have? Okay, I'm going to pause you real quick. So with the brows, right now, this is the first layer of the brow, which is ebony. Now, what I normally do is I'll go into, if I need to soften anything, I'll go into the Brow Pro palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It basically has every color known to man. And we're going to go in with a, a 
small brush, any any small brow brush or even a smudger brush for that matter. Like I would, I could even use this little baby Morphe brush, which is M515, and go in with the color called caramel here. And we can absolutely lighten up any harsh areas or any areas that you want to ombre effect. So instead of, the reason why lately I've been doing this step with a smudger brush rather than an actual eyebrow brush is because it covers more hair quicker. It's, it's still small, I'm not like going all over the edges and stuff, but I can cover more hair with this rather than a thin line of an angled brush. So now we've kind of lightened up um, that brow. Of course, it's still going to look harsh until I do her eyes. So once her eyes are done, you can always revisit the brow. I'm going to go ahead and do her other brow now, the same way that I did this one. Basically, I started with the bottom edge and then I worked my way up. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side while she answers some more questions. Someone asked me, what do I use to whiten my teeth? Oh! Which is interesting. Um, I use the Crest white, Whitening Strips. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the 14-day um, whitening thing. I know it's not makeup related, but I thought I'd ask that question. I mean, answer that question. That's so days. funny. So tips on really oily eyelids, I can never stop mine from creasing. I've tried everything. Um, I'm trying to, the primer potion from, what is the brown? Oh, is it Urban, Urban Decay? Urban Decay primer potion works amazingly. What I like to do first, I put a little bit, a dab of the primer potion, and then on top of that, I do the soft ochre, and that helps, um, to create more of a matte um, finish to your eyelid because I'm a very oily, I have very oily eyelids, so that helps me tremendously when I'm trying to wear my eyeshadows throughout the whole day um, from the morning to night. So hopefully that helps. I would suggest to get the primer potion if you have really oily eyelids. I'm just setting over her ebony pomade with some caramel brow powder. Another person asked, um, what foundation would you use to hide aging spots from mature skin? I would like to, I'd love to stick with cream um, foundations for um, more textured or um, women that are a lot, um, a little older. Um, because it kind of mattifies and smooths out the skin a little bit better. Um, and just sticking to powders as well, like Tamana um, does, is, you know, to give you full coverage. Um, I find that that helps a lot with um, my clients. Awesome. So we're going to pause from the questions for now, but you guys can still ask them. We're going to answer them in a little bit. We're going to get started on the eyes now, so she's going to have to have her eyes closed a little bit. <laughs> so go ahead and close. We're just going to make sure that the eyeshadow base is nice and smooth again before we get started on the actual eyeshadows. So now that the eyebrows are kind of done, we can revisit that as well. Um, I'm going to go under her eyebrow and like right on the brow bone and go ahead and start adding some light color effect over there. So basically highlighting her under brow. And I'm just going to use a basic MAC shader brush. Um, and we're going to use, I'm going to use some MAC eyeshadows so that uh, you guys can, you know, those of you who want to create your own palettes at MAC can do so very easily. That's what I've done here is I just kind of, created my own double-sided MAC palettes of the colors that I use the most. And so on the lighter end, I have a color that is um, more of like a, a beige tone. It's called Orb, O-R-B. And it looks like this here. Wait, where are we? Right here. And we're going to use that under her brow for that little pop of highlight right in here. And what I'm doing is I'm just pressing it on. 
I want it to be as strong as possible. So I'm pressing it in and I'm making sure I'm sharpening up the under area of her brow. Don't worry about blending, it's going to be blended. So this is what I mean when I said I'm gonna show you guys how to blend without blending um, in my posts today. When I'm applying the eyeshadow, I'm applying it quite heavily, but when we do the crease color, we're gonna be using a blending brush for that, which is already gonna be blending for us. We don't really actually have to blend anything. So instead of blending, it's really just sliding color over. It's not, sorry, it's not about wiping, wiping, wiping. So when I say blend, I never really mean buff. I mean bring the color down or bring the color up, kind of move the color, but not really wiping. So we've applied this highlight. Now we can start to contour her eye area. I'm going to use MAC 217 brush for the contour areas of her eyes, which is her crease. And the color that I'm going to use, I mean, there's a few that I love, but I, I think I'm going to go ahead and use texture. My favorite. Oh my god, I love that one. Love it's texture. the best crease color. It looks good on everybody. So texture, I'm going to show you guys right now what it looks like. This is what it looks like, just a soft blending shade, and we're going to apply that right in her crease, and we're going to start creating a little bit more of that depth and that uh, definition in her eye area there. So we're going to start on this outer corner of the crease, and we're going to start rolling it into the whole socket area of her eyes. Open. So what that's doing right now is it's starting to give a little bit more of that contoured effect. The same way that we did the face, we started with more natural tones and then we came out with the Anastasia contour kit and kind of went nuts. That's the same thing that we're doing with our eyes right now. We're starting with more natural tones just to establish the shape so we're not like messing up right away with the darkest browns. And then we can go in and start adding some deeper browns to it to add to the definition and the depth in the outer corners. But right now, starting softer is definitely key. And then what we can do is use, um, you know, a darker color, like I said, just in the corners to give it a little bit more depth, but right now we're still kind of building up the texture shade. And notice how I'm kind of flicking it outward, because I want it to go out into a little bit of a cat eye effect, just to elongate the eye shape and to give it that beautiful feminine touch. That flicking also helps to overlap a little bit with the color that we applied under her eyebrows. So now you know why I didn't have to blend the white. I just packed it on and slid it across, but we didn't have to blend the white because now that we've done this crease color, it kind of blended a little bit of that light color right under it. Now we can go back, and you guys are gonna notice that the eyeshadows take like two seconds. So we are now gonna go back to that same MAC shader brush, the flat shader brush that we have here. We're going to fill her eyelid with um, a nice soft shade. Now, as far as what color we want to use on her eyelid, I usually ask my clients, do you want an overall matte look on your eyes or do you want a shimmer look on your eyes or a mix of both? What do you like? Um, I think it just depends on what I feel like, but normally I do shimmer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll add a little bit of shimmer right on. So one of my favorite shimmer colors is a color called All That Glitters. And go ahead and close your eyes. I'm going to do the press and slide motion that I showed you guys several times in my past videos, but if you guys are new, this is what it is. I call it the press and slide because all it is is pressing color and sliding it down. And that actually makes the shimmer pop a lot more than if you were to just pat it on. So again, you're pressing it and sliding it down. And that makes it look more wet, more creamy, more reflective. 
than if you were to do sweeping motions or padding motions. I might do just one more layer. Okay. Now, the inner tear duct. We want to really have fun with that. I'm going to put nylon in the inner tear duct just to really give it that pop, that brightness, and that, that happy, happy, glowing look for a bride. I'm going to apply that right in here with the same brush. So as you guys can see, I like to use the same brushes over and over. Although, yes, I have every brush imaginable. I tend to go for the same few and use them for a lot of different things. So now we have that pearl drop shine right in her tear duct. We're going to do the same on the other side. This is MAC Nylon, which is a very, very frosty shade. And we're just applying it to the tear duct area and letting it slightly overlap with the color right next to it. Now she can look up to the ceiling and I'm just going to continue that color right under here and right in here, just to complete that whole tear duct zone. So now that that's done, we can actually go in and start adding a little bit of a darker brown to start bringing out some color for her. So before I even do that, I do want to brighten up her tear, I mean her waterline. So I'm going to go in with my favorite nude eye pencil, I'm going to just wipe it off. And this pencil is from NARS, it's called uh, Rue Bonaparte. And it's just their nude. And go ahead and look up. We're going to color in her waterline with nude. Now, normally I ask my bride, do you want a black waterline or a nude waterline? And that, those are their only two choices. And they would tell me what they would want. So I would say for my Indian brides, normally they choose black. And for my Armenian brides or my, um, you know, any other cultures, if they want like a softer, more bridal, bright look, then they'll go for nude. But again, it has to do with your eye shape too. If you're looking to make your eyes look more open, then nude will open them up a little bit more instead of that whole dark look. But you can also create big looking eyes using black too. If you guys saw Brittany Bear's makeup tutorial on my channel, which by the way, if you're still awake after this, you should watch it if you haven't watched it already. That's how to make the eyes look bigger using black on the inside. What I'm going to show you here is how to make the eyes look bigger with using nude on the waterline. So now that the nude is there, I can go in with a flat eyeliner brush. So let me show you which one I really like. If I find it, that would be awesome. Here it is. It's the MAG 212 this lovely flat brush here, and I'm going to go in with a dark brown called Embark, and I'm going to start applying that underneath on her lower lash line, and then we're going to start applying it above in the outer corner as well. So first I'm just going to apply a nice uh, thick layer of this right underneath, and we're going to keep it a little bit darker towards the outer part. We're going to do the same thing on the other eye, giving that nice shaded look and bringing it in towards the inner portion. And I like to go pretty thick on this. I'm not really into a thin lower lash line. But again, you want to ask your bride just to make sure that she's okay with what you're doing. No scary moments, it's all good. So I'm going to go back with my Morphe M515 brush, which is the baby little smudger that we had used on her eyebrows a little bit. And I'm going to go in with texture. And right below the dark brown, I'm going to apply a layer of texture right under it so it looks like the dark brown is fading into a light brown. And with these small brushes, you can kind of go nuts, especially when you're not using a dark eyeshadow shade. It's not going to be falling all over the place, most likely. If you're using a dark eyeshadow shade, then that's when it starts to get a little bit messy. And now what I'm doing is I'm just fading out that lower edge using the same brush that had a little bit of her highlight powder on it, just so that it really has that intense faded look. 
Lastly, for her under eye, I'm going to go in with a little bit of black. This is carbon from MAC. And look up again. I'm just going to darken up that very, very edge of her lash line just on the outer corner. And that's what's just going to give her a little bit more of that definition and that pop in comparison to all the faded areas that we've just created right now. Of course, once her mascara is on, it's really going to make another big difference. Okay? So now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of a dark brown to her outer crease area, that outer like, corner. The brush I'm going to use now is M506. I love the Morphe tapered brushes. I can't get this like through to you how much I love it. Like You guys have to have this. And I'm going to go in with Embark again, the dark brown. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to darken up the outer V of her eyes. I'm going to create a little bit of like a point out here. This is going to help me when I'm ready to do her eyeliner, which is going to be next. Because now I'm kind of establishing that angle. Back to Embark. Go ahead and turn towards me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Gonna just chisel it right into that outer corner. Give it a little edge, which I love because this brush is tapered. You can just literally create this edge out of nowhere. And now we have this really nice, cute, you know, cat eye shape a little bit. Not exactly, but a little bit of a cat eye shape. And now I'm going to go right into uh, like a shimmery bronzy brown, which is called Mulch from MAC. And I'm going to apply that right in between the dark brown and the all that glitters color, which was on her lid. And that's going to be the transition shade right in between. So it looks very three-dimensional and nothing like, you know, all of a sudden it goes from light to dark. This kind of just makes the transition a little bit more seamless. The brush that I'm using right now is the Inglot brush, number 9S. It's just a basic flat brush. You can even use that same MAC brush that I've been using, that shader brush for this. But I wanted to use a clean brush, so. Okay, now we're ready for eyeliner on the top. My favorite. I love. I totally love. So let me grab, let's see here. I have a lot of eyeliner brushes that I have in here, and sometimes I use one over the other. I guess I don't really have a major, major preference. Right now, I guess I'll use the Sigma Winged Liner Brush, which I really like. It's super sharp. Let me give it a good spray real quick. So it's as good as new. And I'm going to go into the Inglot number 77 AMC Gel Liner. The gel liner is seriously the blackest black I've ever used. Um, it's very thick and full pigmented. It, like it's super black, super, super. Like look at the difference, it's super black. So that's what I'm gonna use on the top. And then after we put on eyeliner, we're gonna do a little bit more of the shadowing and then that's pretty much it. So with this brush, I'm just saturating it, making sure there's no chunks on the brush, everything's nice and smooth and, and wet, not dry. And now go ahead and close your eyes. I'm just going to do her regular liner first. And I'm lifting up her skin so I can kind of get deep into her lash line so I don't have to go super thick with it. And also, you want to make sure you're asking your client, you know, how thick they normally like to go with their eyeliner. Um, I usually ask because I love to go really thick with my eyeliner, but it's very hard once you go thick to then make it thinner if your client doesn't like it. So ask your client, how thick do you like to go with the eyeliner? Do you like it rounded look? Do you like the elongated look where I stretch it out with the wing? You know, all those questions before you get started, you should ask. And now I'm just kind of filling in that area here. We're gonna do the same on the other side. We're not doing the wing yet. We're just doing the eyeliner making sure you're pulling up the skin so you can get deep into the lash line. I find it easy as well when um, you're using a cream liner doing small strokes. 
mm -hmm. to to make sure that the line is straight, as opposed to just kind of going in and just kind of one long one line. long stroke. I find that that's a lot easier. Hopefully, that helps. Absolutely. And it's nice to kind of separate the eye into zones where you can do the wings separately so that you don't have to freak yourself out and psych yourself out about having to do this whole eye. Separate it and knock out small areas at a time. And then at the end, you can always do that smooth glide to smooth everything out. Go ahead and open your eyes. Okay. I love how that's my phone right now. Just gonna keep so I'm going to grab a little bit more products because I don't want this product to get dry on my hand or anything or on my brush. The point with this product is, yes, the Inglot gel liner does dry really fast, so it's a little difficult to use, but as long as you keep it wet on the brush and wet on your hand, you're fine. So while she's looking straight ahead, I'm going to do her wings with her eyes open. That way I know exactly what angle to go in and I'm not like guessing where to go. So while her eyes are open, I can see that I want my angle to go like right in through here. So you can create a little bit of a wing to start off with. This is my like cheat method. And then I'm going to match that angle to that side. And then we're going to connect the wing into the eyeliner. So we're going to do the same thing here. Matching the wing, making sure that we can go, actually I can probably go even higher. Okay, matching the angle. Smooth this out real quick. Alrighty, and then now that your angles are there and you have this cheat sheet wing going on, you can have your client close her eyes and you can just match it up with the rest of her eyeliner. Go ahead and close. We're now going to connect the wing to the rest of her eyeliner. And if you want to extend it, you absolutely can. The only real, you know, thing that I want to make sure you guys know is the angle should be the same. And then, of course, extending and doing all those fun things you could do right after. I'm going to get a little bit more product since it's dry again. Making sure it's nice and gliding wet so that it glides over the eye really nicely and smoothly. Well, I guess I'll just do it this way. <laughs> And she's going to close, and I'm just going to fill in the space in between her wing and her liner. Make sure it's gliding really well. And if I want to extend, I absolutely can extend. Okay, open. Alright, so now that the wing and the liner is on, I'm going to now connect a little bit of that outside shadowy part to her eyeliner using some eyeshadow, some black or dark brown, and that's really what's going to kind of envelope the whole look and create this really nice kind of a finished eyeshadow effect for, her, for the bridal uh, theme. So I'm going to go in with the dark brown first, and then I'm going to dip into the black. So I'm mixing the black and the dark brown with that same Morphe brush that I like so much, the 506. And right in here, basically, actually go ahead and open your eyes. Right where that fold touches, the fold of her eyelid touches the wing, that's where you want to add a little bit of the shadowy effect. Okay, now look down. And you would just kind of continuing, continue it on to the crease area and you can absolutely use your fingers to then blend a little bit right in between if you need to. And that's kind of how I get that really shadowy effect on that outer corner. So again, mixing in bark and carbon, which is the dark brown and the black, and right in that corner where her eyelid fold meets her winged eyeliner, that's where you're going to just give it a little bit of that shadowy look. This is optional. I just feel like nothing looks finished without it. But sometimes I have brides that are like, oh, I don't want any black. I don't want any, you know, I don't mind with eyeliner, but I don't want any black on the top or whatever. 
So in that case, you could do a darker chocolate or whatever. So what I'm doing right now in Griselda is I'm mixing dark brown and black to create a deep chocolate look. Okay. So now that that is done, we can either add some more shimmer on the eyelid or we can leave it the same, totally up to you and your bride. Sometimes my brides like that um, Stila cosmetic shimmer that you could just add as a foil shimmer uh, right on the eyelid. But what I've noticed is with hooded eyes, it's very easy for that color to transfer up here and mess up your crease. So usually I try to stay away from that unless someone has like a super big eyelid, then I'm like, okay, great, whatever. It's not gonna, nothing's gonna, gonna happen. happen. But on my eyes, I have hooded eyes and that just kind of transfers a little too much on me. So I kind of know it's not like the safest bet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and curl her lashes and apply some mascara and some falsies. Go ahead and look down. This is the Shiseido Eyelash Curler. My favorite curler. And I'm going to use the Hypnos Drama Waterproof on her um, tops and bottoms. Go ahead and look up. We'll do the bottoms first. This is, again, Hypnos Drama Waterproof. I only use waterproof mascaras on my brides. I kind of refuse to use anything else. Again, for me, it's about insurance. I'm not going to be there to fix mess ups, so I need to make sure it doesn't mess up. So she can cry. Oh my God, I've had so many Indian weddings, like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and I, I come back in the evening to change them for the reception, and so many times uh, they don't look like they've even cried or anything, and I always tease them, like, what, you didn't cry when you left your family? And they're like, no, we I bawled, I bawled. And I'm like, oh my God, yay, your eyeliner totally stayed on. So it's kind of like, Reinforcement there, that your lashes, your mascara, your eyeliner, everything will stay on as long as everything you're using is waterproof. And I'm just getting a nice clean coat to the bottom lashes. If you need more mascara to grab onto your lashes, you give it a little wiggle. If you want to separate, then just go in a downward stroke. Okay, bottom lashes done. And go ahead and look down. We're going to do the tops, lift up the lid, and just apply. Another thing is if you feel like some of your eyeliner got messed up when you were adding that final coat of eyeshadow, um, can, you can just use some liquid eyeliner close just to recoat the areas that you feel lost its depth. It's super, super easy. Oh, what the heck? Open. Okay, we're good. All right, so now what we're going to do is put on the falsies. So what I brought with me is I know this is one of the ones that Griselda likes to use in her post, so I made sure I brought it. Yeah. It's the um, Noir Fairy. And then I also have some individuals, some like generic individuals, the long ones, that we can use if we want to spike out any areas. But let's see how the Noir Fairy looks alone. So this is from houseoflashes.com. We're going to throw those on. Those are one of my favorite. Those are the Pixie Lux lashes. Oh, yeah. Pixie those. Lux is so dreamy. Yes. I find that, that with my eye shape, um, it opens up my eyes a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. Opposed to closing them because I like to have a real, like, open open look that's another reason why i always use a nude um, eyeliner inside my waterline to kind of give me that open up effect yeah, love it and then also um make sure where is it okay make sure your lashes 
fit your client before you actually glue them, of course. This seems like it looks fine. Do you ever trim the outside a just little bit? bit? Just yes. a bit? Okay, we're gonna trim the outside just a bit. Oh, you look like a doll. Okay. Alrighty, we're just gonna trim a little bit of that outer corner of the lashes. And we're gonna put a little bit of glue along the rim. The glue that I use is also from Hustle Lashes. It's latex free, I love it. But you do have to kind of warn your clients a little bit when you're using this because it is really hard to remove. So that's your warning. I use their, their, their glue as well. So oh good. I'm just like, <laughs> you know the up. lash is not coming off. Oh my god, it's still hard to come off. Yes. I don't even like fight it. Even when I take it off, I still have extra glue on there and I'm just like... <laughs> it's so funny. I like to match center to center. And then I close in the outer corner, and then I close in the inner corner. Open. Let me pull out a little bit. Okay. Very cute. Very, very cute. I love it. All right, same on the other side. Cutting a little bit off on that outer corner. We're going to add a little bit of that glue. And we're going to go ahead and match it center to center and then pull it as needed to really get it to have that nice stand up effect. The cool thing about this glue is it's already a little sticky, so it's not like you have to really wait that long before you can pop it on. Okay. Open. Gorgeous. I love these lashes. They're so pretty. We don't even really need the individual. It looks nice. Cool. So now once this dries, I'm going to add a little bit of extra mascara just to give it that spiky effect. Right now, she needs some lipstick. So one of the things that we had talked about while I did her cheeks was we're going to kind of match her cheeks to her lips a little bit. So I'm going to use Sore Lip Liner, and I'm going to put um, a little bit of the uh, peachy tones and pink tones and nude tones to mix a very custom lip look for her. Actually, I could even do... Oh, sorry, it's good. Okay. I'm just going to warm it up on my hand. Sometimes the pencils don't glide so perfectly, so I like to warm it up. And we're just going to give a very light lip line throughout her natural lip. And finish off the outer edges. Fill in the outer corners. This is something I almost always do. Fill in those outer corners. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now we're going to go in with lipstick. This is my lipstick palette. I have a lot of peachy nudes right in this uh, part right here. So I'm going to find a really good one for her. I would say kind of sexy would be a really nice one. And then we could go a little bit neuter in the center. So this color is called Kind of Sexy from MAC. I'm just applying it all over the lip. I like to saturate my brush with enough product so I don't have to double dip. And now we can kind of have a field day with her gloss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix Nude from Whitening Lightning Gerard Cosmetics with Spring Fling, same company. 
And that's going to create a really pretty springy look, which is so perfect for bridal, right along the center of her lips. And then what I was left on my brush, I'm just going to apply it on the rest of the lips as well. So I'm just applying some of this color on my hand. Again, from Whitening Lightning and Gerard Cosmetics. And now I'm just going to mix into my own little concoction. And we're going to add this slick of shine mainly towards the center of the lips. And then whatever's left on the brush, we can just drag it out. Love. Awesome. And I love how creamy it is because it gives you a little bit more of that long lasting feeling like it's not so watery for a lip gloss. Like it feels thick enough where you are kind of aware that it's on and there's no guesswork. Like later on she'll touch up right after she eats or something but most likely it'll stay on for most of the day. So that's kind of the majority of the whole bridal makeup look thing. I'm just gonna add a little bit more mascara to her top lashes to make them stand up a little bit more. And then we're going to do a quick recap of everything we did so that we can make sure you have your notes down perfectly. Same mascara. I'm just going to spike it up a little bit. And then we can just kind of make sure that the face is absolutely perfect. I usually run my brush over her face, my powder brush one last time before I take my pictures and leave. And what I did here is I used my thumbnail to be my guard, so I'm not messing up her eyeshadow. One of the many uses of these huge nails I have. And now I can go in with my highlight brush and give a nice, smooth, kind of a sweep to make sure everything is looking flawless. And now I'm going to scoot her back just a little bit so you guys can get an overall look of the makeup because now I'm going to add one final piece to her hair and that's kind of going to finish up the whole look. And now that we've backed up a little bit, we can kind of see a little bit more of the contour. It's not looking super, super bright. Everything's kind of looking a little bit more normal. And now Priscilla can see herself on that screen and tell me, do you want me to add any more blush or any more highlight? Or like, what else would you like me to add before I do the rest of your hair? Maybe a little bit more contour. All right. Just a bit. Okay. See, that makes me happy. When my girls want more contour, I'm like screaming inside in a good way. All right, Havana it is. And remember to flick it down so it doesn't just look like a line. We're getting a little bit of that bronzy effect. I'm gonna flick it down. Looking really nice. Hi, are you Snapchatting? Snapchatting. <laughs> Say hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, you got me so addicted to Snapchat. Sorry. It's pretty addicting. It is very addicting. <laughs> All right, bronze, 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 bronze. Making sure the forehead's nice and even with that, too. Oh, yes. Is that cool, right there? Yes, do you mind scooting it over? I can't see. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah? Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So that concludes the makeup portion. I'm just going to add a little final touch to her hair. Um, I want you guys, I'm going to just, I'm going to tell you the name of the, the company who makes these um, custom headpieces for brides. Like they can customize it or you could just get whatever you like from their um, online catalog. But um, it's, it's awesome. It's called Da Vinci. Let me go to their page, I'll show you right now. It's called Da Vinci Design, and this is their page right here, Da Vinci Design, it's spelled D-V-N-C-H-I, and um, they were so kind today to let me borrow some beautiful pieces to put on her. 
These are their earrings, custom-made earrings, to go with a custom-made headpiece that we've um, gotten for this class. And one lucky winner will get to win these earrings and the headpiece. And I will explain the giveaway rules and everything tomorrow morning. Those will all be explained. Um, and I'll also announce the winners of our last giveaways. So we have two giveaways still going on right now from the last few episodes. So we're going to talk about that um, tomorrow. But for now, I wanted to explain to you this amazing designer. Everything is Swarovski crystal. Very, very high end. Very high end. Um, and they have been so sweet to give away the earrings and the headpiece to a lucky winner, and I'll explain that in a moment. But now I'm going to show you how I'm going to put this on as her final touch. So I'm just going to body pin this in. This is um, a really cool piece. You could use it as a headpiece. Maybe I can have you face there a little bit. You can use it as a headpiece. You could use it as a base to your veil. If you want to put your veil right behind it and poof out, you can use that as the base of your veil. Um, you can use it as a, a back piece for the back of the bun. Um, is there a way maybe you can turn around that way? Like turn your body just a little bit to show the bun. Yep. So this is her bun. We can totally put it right here on the top of her bun, on the side. I just love this size. So that's why I chose it for today. Go ahead and face the audience. And lastly, you can absolutely use it um, as a bracelet. Um, they can do a wrap around for you and anything like that. So that's kind of why I've decided to kind of stick with this uh, line here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it right on the side. If you could face a little bit this way. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my bobby pins. And it, it's actually a brooch. So you could actually bobby pin the brooch in um, to, to hold right up against the hair. So you would bobby pin right where the metal part of the brooch is so it can stick. And you could also pin the ends um, if you want to go over some of the metal. You can just go over some of the metal with the bobby pin and make sure that it's hidden under the rest of the hair. So now it has this beautiful, beautiful, secured, amazing statement piece that goes with the earrings and now I feel like you look like more of a complete bride. What do you think guys? Write your comments on the latest post and uh, we're going to answer some questions for you but I'm like so in love with your bridal look right now. It's not even funny. Like I could totally picture you walking down the aisle. Like oh it looks gorgeous. Yay! Yes. Any grooms? Any grooms. <laughs> I kind of want to get married again because I really, you know, when I was getting married, I didn't know all these companies and stuff. I would have loved to have it. I had to make my own headpiece. I had to sew my own veil. I mean, that's pretty amazing, though. But it wasn't as pretty as what I would have sewed for. Like, that is pretty bomb. Anyway. This is beautiful. <laughs> I would wear this the day of my wedding. I think it looks so elegant and classy. Oh my god. Love, love, love. So quick recap before we say bye to Griselda and I take the hot seat. Uh, what we did was we started off with a really good primer. We made sure we also put the Benefit Professional on the areas to prevent any shine and um, uneven skin texture. Then we applied MAC Pro Longwear Foundation on her. I mixed a couple colors to get her right tone um, for the brightening effect. Then we added the under eye concealer, which is the Macro Longwear as well. Um, we patted it until it dried, and then we did the highlight and the contour using the HD Pro Conceal from LA Girl Cosmetics. Once we blended that in, we set each layer of her skin, each zone of her skin, with the correct powder color. So light color powder for her light zones, dark for dark zones, medium for all the in-between zones and any areas that we want to soften. Then I whipped out the Anastasia contour book, went nuts on her using some lights and darks all over, um, really to give her that nice bronze effect. Um, as a bronze glow, we added face glow from Girlactic in bronze. Um, so we added that for that J-Lo effect. Then we did some blush. We used copper tone blush on her because we knew we wanted to go like pinky peachy on her lips as well. So kind of balancing that was really cool for us. After we did that, we did her eyebrows. And then we did her eyeshadows. And the eyeshadows took like five minutes. It was so quick. It was the eyeliner that takes a little bit more time. And that is totally fine. I want you guys to perfect the eyeliner. Don't rush it. Don't, like what she said, Try don't, don't feel like you have to do it all in one sweep. 
Take your time, do it in sections, and then you could do one sweep over that just to clean everything up. But make sure you're taking your time and making it really nice. But don't do so many millions of strokes because also when you do the wing, you don't want a million strokes because then every time you stroke, you're making the wing thicker and thicker. So be careful with that. We kind of did one main stroke for the wing and then when we connected the wing into the liner, that's when we did all of our uh, crazy strokes. After that, we added some lashes and we did some uh, mascara over the lashes as well just to make them stand up a little bit more. And for the lips, we made our own custom lipstick. I always, always, always customize lips for my clients. I'm never happy with one color. I'm just like one of those psychos that I can never, ever, ever say, you're wearing this one lipstick. Like, it's got to be like five things. Five things. So we put on Sore Lip Liner. We put on Kinda Sexy Lipstick. Those are both from MAC. And the glosses, we put on two different color glosses to create the perfect pinky nude for her. We put Spring Fling and Nude from um, whiteninglightening.com and also gerardcosmetics.com. That's the same sister company. They are found on the same, and you could use my code DYF for a discount on anything that you buy from those websites. Just enter DYF, you'll get 25% off out the door, you're done. Um, sale items, you could just use the sale that they're having because usually that's like really cool. They have bundles and stuff. So I love, love, love. And the other cool thing is Gerard Cosmetics is giving away to two lucky winners from this episode the entire line of lip glosses that they have to one lucky winner and the entire line of lipsticks that they have to another lucky winner. So now we have three giveaways going on from this one bridal episode because it's kind of awesome. Like it's a bridal class. I want it to be big. So we have Gerard Cosmetics giving away two huge bundles to two winners and we have Da Vinci Design giving away custom beautiful earrings Swarovski, real Swarovski stone. Um, on the for the earrings and on the headpiece and that's going away to another lucky winner. So we're gonna have three winners I'm gonna explain all these giveaways tomorrow. So don't worry for now Just make sure you get screenshots of everything I'm gonna have her come a little closer do her posing so you guys can get your screenshots and you can enter the giveaways Using the screenshots that you've taken from this class to prove to us that you are a member and that you saw the class because we kind of do need proof and uh, Yeah, so Griselda go ahead and kind of lean a little bit forward Maybe we can get a side-to-side -side kind of a posing, cutie pie, cutie pie. Take your screenshots, girls. This is your moment to enter your dream giveaways. Looking gorgeous. How we're looking down, looking from the side. Get that beautiful Da Vinci piece in there. Show off that jewelry, girl. Designer, designer. Oh my gosh, you look stunning, Griselda. Like you seriously you. look like a million dollars right now. I love it. Oh, and her dress, it's all perfect. Yay, thank you guys. So now you can relax, have some snacks, do what you like. And I'm gonna sit down for about five, 10 minutes and answer some more questions for you. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, dress your face, it was a pleasure. <laughs> And I will see you guys next time. Yay! This was awesome. All right, guys. My turn. Whoa. All right. Woo! That was a very long and detailed class.